Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back. Uh, so here uh, we will look into some of the very basic uh, design considerations. Uh, so for uh, um, so in this thing, uh, uh, in the same engine, if you want to design uh, for a large Mach number range, that is, for say, for Mach number three to Mach number fifteen, then you have to have a range where it operates basically it can operate in a ramjet scramjet mode which is called the uh, like a uh, dual mode uh, scramjet and then you can operate it in a pure scramjet mode when the Mach number is greater than 7. Okay, so, in the dual mode scramjet uh, what you have is essentially you have the air coming in and then you have this uh, through this uh, uh, shock trains the, uh, uh, the flow gets uh, compressed and then you have the constant area isolator. Mm, and uh, this, this uh, the the flow that can um, essentially uh, happen um, uh, is can be can be subsonic uh, uh, in some parts, and then you add fuel, and then this can be a ramjet combustor. Okay, whereas in the pure scramjet mode, uh, this air passes through this. Uh, mm, th the shock structure is of course different because you have a, a Mach number much higher, and then uh, this uh, shock trains are prevalent ever in the isolator, which contains uh, the shock trains, and uh, then you have basically add heat. You basically add fuel much uh, upstream because now you see that this has much reduced uh, uh, flow residence uh, time scales. Um, Uh, so, you add uh, fuel uh, even, uh, even before the isolator itself and then you can have a design. So, one of the major considerations is that uh, there are two things that like the length of the isolator which can contain the shock train and the divergence angle and the length of the combustor. Okay. So, uh, we will not as I said we will not go into this details, but uh, these are the main things and there are like several correlations as well as empirical uh, relationships, semi analytical relationships that are there. But uh, there are uh, people basically can uh, use essentially three type of methods. One is the integral method that like the Rayleigh flow analysis that I showed you. One can use the differential equations um, uh, to, uh, to solve the different processes of the same uh, things, but uh, essentially the processes the equations that you need to solve are essentially the mass momentum energy and in uh, if you want you can be species uh, equations can also be involved and even if you want to do further analysis they can of course well use CFD to do the design. So, the integral analysis is mainly used to do the assessing the experimental data and un uh, understanding the of the key interactive forces uh, features and the uh, development for preliminary design information and uh, provide engine performance analysis. So, mm, provide engine performance assessment. So, uh, this this integral analysis this uh, even if they are 1D or very rudimentary this is extremely important and must be carried out before going into any sorts of complicated uh, analysis. Okay. So, typically uh, you can one can also couple uh, this comes from Billig's uh, uh, paper uh, scramjet combustion processes. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, sorry combustion uh, this comes from this paper uh, um, combustion processes in um, supersonic flow by Billig is one of the pioneers of scramjet. Um, uh, from this uh, JP Journal of Propulsion Power in 80, 1988. Uh, so, what he says is that one can essentially couple the integral method and the differential methods uh, to solve uh, to develop a design. So, the integral method should uh, give you the pressure distribution and then that can uh, 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 the pressure distribution, but some of the integral method needs to be fed with the wall shear model, the wall friction model, the wall heat transfer model, the combustion efficiency model, uh, the shock trend model, the uh, there can be base pressure model all these things should go into the integral methods. Okay. 
and then uh, the integral method can provide you the pressure distribution, uh, the pressure rise uh, inside the combustion chamber and then you can feed this information into the finite difference method. So, the finite difference methods because it is like mm, you can incorporate the rate kinetics model, turbulence model etcetera and then you can have the combustion efficiency and um, that is this can lead to many other things also. But then this can be used to refine your, uh, mm, your integral analysis itself. So, in this coupled manner in an iterative manner the whole uh, analysis process might evolve. Okay. In the for the integral analysis the equations that you need to solve are essentially this uh, the, the continuity uh, energy and the momentum equations. So, this is your uh, continuity equation. Um, so, where you have uh, so this is the say between say uh, two stations A and uh, 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 this is between two station A and B uh, 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 your uh, um, total mass flow rate at station A plus the mass flow rate of fuel that is is equal to the mass flow rate at station B. Uh, the pressure uh, the force arising uh, due to pressure differential uh, must be balanced by the, um, uh, the inertia forces and that due to the fuel and also there has to be like uh, losses uh, uh, that can arise due to the, uh, the friction as well as the fuel injection. Mm, so, uh, whereas this A B F W refer to the Mm, uh, refer to the control volume uh, entrance exit fuel and wall respectively. So, uh, the, the whole this is the force balance inside the combustor uh, that is this is or the momentum balance. change of um, momentum balance or uh, force balance. Um, 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 so, this is uh, this is the force arising uh, due to the, the pressure forces uh, at the inlet and the exit. This this force uh, pressure P uh, W sin alpha arises due to the um, due to the uh, due to the uh, um, uh, fuel and the wall interactions. Uh, this is the shear stress that arises due to the um, uh, from the walls and this is the inertia force uh, changing due to the uh, flow acceleration or deceleration and this is due to the fuel injection. Okay. Um, so, these are the forces and then you can have uh, all, all of course, you have to use the energy balance um, uh, where uh, the total uh, you see this is the, the, the stagnation enthalpy at exit at station A and this is essentially the stagnation enthalpy at station B. Of course, the fuel mass fraction needs to be added um, and uh, this is the, uh, the fuel um, uh, stagnation enthalpy um, where F is the, the fuel to air ratio. Mm, and of course, this is the heat addition because of the uh, because the the, the additional uh, enthalpy that the fuel brings in with itself. Okay, so uh, um, uh, so F is essentially your um, m dot F by m dot A. That is a fuel to air mass flow ratio. So, be using this uh, integral analysis, one can essentially derive uh, the different. Uh, uh, design the engine, but of course, it as you see that this is much more complex. One of the thing that is needed is that uh, the pressure area variation because uh, the uh, you see that the area at section A and area at section B is not same. So the area is essentially has to have a divergence to um, uh, to uh, to to accommodate the addition uh, the heat addition in the supersonic flow. So, the, for that people use uh, different uh, things like there are like uh, Croco's uh, uh, pressure area tailoring like uh, P times A divided by epsilon by epsilon minus 1. So, whichever as epsilon can be equal to uh, 0, 1 and a minus gamma minus minus gamma m square depending on whether it is a um, uh, constant pressure process, whether it is a constant area uh, process or a constant Mach number process. Um, so those things are, 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 are people people do uh, additional uh, additional empirical correlations that people induce uh, to to develop this design. But it's essentially the solution of these three uh, moment continuity, momentum, and energy balance that gives uh, rise to this um, and the, the, to the uh, that with which one can go into the design analysis. So once again, this uh, uh, to remind you, these are the scramjet processes that uh, which are of uh, interest to us. Uh, that if we are looking into the isolator and the combustor part, that of course you have a shock train, and um, and uh, downstream of the shock train we inject the fuel, and the fuel must mix before it can burn, and before it can burn, there the fuel must ignite. So mixing, ignition, burning, these are the most important processes inside a scramjet combustor. Okay. So, uh, uh, as such uh, combustion in scramjets uh, this is challenging uh, 
uh, because of the large variation in thermodynamic conditions. Okay. Uh, you know, as I said before, that in a gas turbine combustor, uh, you know, it's uh, the flow is essentially conditioned by several things that is passes through a series of compressor blades, rotostator, rotostator blades, and then it comes to the through the diffuser, and they before, then it goes into the uh, to the combustor. So the combustor entry conditions are pretty much well defined; it cannot vary too much. Uh, whereas in a scramjet, there is no such rotating or you know, machinery to control it, and it's only the uh, cross section radius that uh, changes it. So any small change in the upstream downstream can lead to a variable uh, or even in the flight uh, uh, flight um, uh, um, uh, uh, flight parameters like the flow, flow speed changes etc those things can also lead to a large change in the uh, change in the uh, in the in the combustor uh, entry conditions and uh, the variation can be both in thermodynamics as well as in the in the flow parameters okay no now at a low mark number the uh, the thing is that at low Mach number, the heat deposition in the combustion chamber is larger than the incoming uh, flow energy. Okay, but then as a result of that, the pressure rise is also higher. Okay, and there are like more chances of like uh, upstream shock formation. Okay, so um, uh, as a result of that, the fl the, the 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 flow speed uh, the is reduced you know, because the heat release effect is very strong here, and that can lead to very large pressure rise, and that can also lead to flow separation. Okay, so it does not mean that the low Mach number operation of a scramjet is simple. Okay, that is a Mark II operation is not simple. Whereas at higher Mach number, the thing is that your heat deposition in the combustion chamber is smaller than incoming flow energy. For example, at Mark 25, uh, if at all it is possible, there is no such Mark 25 scramjet engine. Uh, whereas the heat addition is only 10% of the incoming flow enthalpy. So this is not really useful. Okay, and effect of heat addition is much less pronounced. But then uh, why will you operate a scramjet engine at Mark 25 when the heat addition is only 10% of the flow enthalpy? So it's simply not worth it. Okay, and the another thing is that the complex aerothermodynamics coupled with combustion. Okay, so here you see that uh, just before that, uh, before combustion happens, there is a series of shock trends. Even inside the combustion chamber of a um, of a scramjet engine is characterized by several kind of uh, like oblique shocks, uh, expansion fans, uh, and shock boundary layer interaction. These are ubiquitous in a scramjet combustor. So the the aerothermodynamics um, uh, is is really complex, and uh, the combustion process cannot be learnt, cannot be mixing and the combustion process cannot be learned in isolation from the this uh, this complex aerothermodynamics and the shock uh, uh, combustion interaction shock boundary layer interaction so one has to understand this in a much more integrated manner and another thing is that the mixing time and the chemical time scales are comparable and it is comparable even with the um, uh, it's it is um, comparable even with the flow residence time scales okay so mixing the flow residence time scales the mixing time scales and the chemical time scales are all similar okay so the mixing and the chemical time scales are similar so that means that the, the, the there is very strong turbulence chemistry interaction when the residence time scale and the mixing are similar when the and the chemical time scale are similar that 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 poses great challenge to flame stabilization so these are the different challenges that one encounters in a scramjet um, a combustor so what are the key processes if you look into the scramjet combustor um, uh, apart from the the aerothermodynamics that is the in terms of the uh, combustion itself so if you say that the combustor has a total residence time of about 1 milliseconds so of course you need to have thermal management of fuel if you are using a liquid uh, uh, um, a liquid uh, fuels so then of course you have to um, it has to there has to be break up the liquid jet must break up there must be atomization there must be dispersion okay uh, and there must be then you have to have evaporation then you have to have mixing the mixing is actually a very long process okay and then you must have ignition delay so that the uh, you must have ignition and that takes some time and uh, then you have flame stabilization so all these processes you see take time and all these processes has to be completed within this 1 milliseconds and but all these processes this this processes functioning properly in an interacting manner is required to generate the thrust okay so all this process must function uh, perfectly and they must function uh, satisfactorily within 1 milliseconds so that proper thrust can be generated so this is the basic uh, big, biggest challenge of a scramjet engine that you have to have all these processes in a, in a, that done in a very very short amount of time which is extremely challenging so uh, we will go into mixing 
the mixing is a very very important process inside a scramjet okay as you see here that uh, mixing is a very important process and mixing as such is the process well, often is the process that takes most amount of time okay now uh, mixing is a critical process uh, why because we all know that combustion cannot happen it cannot even be initiated unless fuel layer mixing at a molecular level has been achieved okay now uh, you cannot study mixing in isolation uh, inside a scramjet because uh, because ultimately the your your mixed uh, fuel layer mixed uh, state must undergo combustion and when it undergoes combustion the, the local temperature density diffusivity viscosity everything changes okay and then that affects mixing itself okay you will see that mixing essentially in this scramjet combustors are controlled by essentially shear mixing uh, layers and uh, uh, large roll ups of the shear layers mm -hmm. uh, uh, and of course very strong turbulence mixing is there uh, so all this process essentially control the mixing and the subsequent combustion so in this uh, scramjet so you can say that uh, mixing happens to diffusion um, it can uh, it happens to uh, parallel layers of different velocities densities and chemical composition or uh, it happens to vertical mixing and of course it happens to turbulence so if you consider the mixing in shear layers so what is a shear layers uh, shear layers is essentially that region in the flow which is characterized by strong uh, velocity gradients and essentially which which uh, results in strong uh, shear forces okay and uh, that is caused by when that is that happens when you have uh, two parallel layers which are moving at different velocities okay as in this case so in that case if you have two parallel layers moving at different velocities u1 greater than u2 one moving with u1 another moving with u2 and u1 greater than u2 then you will have a shear layer developing between them and this is governed by the shear layer thickness now the reynolds number that is typically characterized uh, used to characterize is essentially this uh, delta u um, uh, times uh, delta which is this shear layer thickness divided by nu okay and whereas delta u is essentially u1 minus u2 okay and uh, then uh, of course uh, when you have this kind of a situation then this shear layer does not develop like this itself uh, what happens is that um, it leads to uh, development of this instabilities here you see uh, like a kelvin helmholtz instability we form and when there is instability there is a large scale vortex roll up and you see that this is uh, one fluid um, this is another fluid uh, of course there is velocity difference between them and there is composition difference between them and you see that how mixing is happening there is not much mixing happening through here but uh, the, as this rolls up and then there are like large strain that's formed and then there are because of the when there is a large uh, species gradient and large uh, velocity gradients then you see that mixing has happening is happening along these regions okay so it is this type of like uh, roll ups um, uh, uh, vertical roll ups that assist in uh, mixing uh, when in high speed uh, flows mm, eventually it is uh, there has to be diffusion that at the smaller scales which has to mix the two fluids but then uh, the diffusion process is uh, assisted uh, uh, by creation of this large species gradients which is accomplished through this uh, different roll up of this uh, uh, of these different uh, structures um, which uh, assist in creating this uh, large uh, species uh, composition gradients in the flow itself okay so uh, this is uh, the thing and uh, where you see uh, in this we can do different kinds of analysis you can define a convective velocity which is the velocity of this uh, vortices of that are moving um, etc now um, uh, we, one of the things that uh, here we under want to understand the effect of compressibility on shear layer growth okay that is uh, you, can, you can define as i said that you can define a convective velocity here Mm, and uh, mm, uh, which is the velocity of this uh, vertical structures which are moving now uh, if this becomes large Mach number okay that which is typical in a scramjet in a scramjet engine uh, how does really the shear layer development happen now why are we developing interested in the shear layer development because even if there is composition difference the mixing layer that will be formed or the reaction layer that will be formed will be essentially embedded inside these shear layers so uh, this uh, embedding uh, we need to to understand what happens uh, how the what is the thickness of the mixing layer or what is the thickness of the reaction layer the a bigger parameter is essentially the shear layer okay this thickness so since uh, this reaction layers mixing layers are always embedded in the shear layers it is of interest to know how does even this shear layer develop in this kind of uh, um, uh, compressible flows 
such as such it turns out that it is a very uh, non intuitive uh, that if we define a convective Mach number like this where uh, m c 1 is equal to u 1 minus u c whereas u c is the convective velocity divided by the, uh, the sound speed and the fluid 1 mm, that is uh, this is the, uh, this is the fluid uh, 1 um, uh, and uh, um, uh, this is the um, fluid 1 this this is the velocity of u c. Uh, okay, and uh, if we define a convective Mach number based on that, um, which is defined as the difference between u1, that is the free stream velocity of 1 minus uc divided by a1, and that is my convective Mach number. And if I plot the uh, delta by x, that is um, the shear layer growth. Uh, this as a function of uh, the as a function of distance um, at, a, at 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 m c one uh, as a function of Mach number we see that at uh, after Mach number equal to one this essentially asymptotes so there is not much of a shear layer growth the shear layer growth is important for mixing uh, because uh, once the shear layer becomes very large then um, uh, the, the essentially that is where inside which the two fluids essentially meet and can mix okay so but this this is uh, kind of an asymptote um, uh, at about Mach number of um, uh, starting at uh, uh, which is reached the Mach number of 2 um, says that the, the compressibility essentially has a has a uh, limiting effect on uh, on the shear layer growth and the corresponding um, mixing. So, one has to one cannot uh, rely only on shear layer development for to achieve mixing one has to think of some other um, processes also um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a compressible flow. Now, as such, uh, uh, more there are more to uh, mixing within a shear layer. Uh, whereas uh, Demotac is uh, suggested that um, uh, that it is essentially the uh, local Reynolds number, which is this guy, uh, can define the um, mixing within the uh, within the uh, shear layer, uh, or or the development of a or the or the mixing inside the shear layer can be developed uh, can be defined by this. Now, uh, but the thing is that he said that uh, uh, there exists an initial region of unmixedness. Okay. So, uh, just be, uh, just after the shear layer is developing uh, and this large scale roll ups are happening, it does not mean that mixing start immediately. Okay. So, he says that there is an initial region of unmixedness and uh, which is this region of unmixedness is called the mixing transition length. Uh, so, there is no mixing in this mixing transition length or very limited mixing. Now, the reason is that uh, there is this at this region, this large scale structures develop and they entrain um, initially unmixed fluids. So, for this the large scale structures essentially roll up and uh, so they create the strain on this um, on this the fluid elements and essentially create a large gradients through which mixing through which uh, mixing can happen, but then that tax takes some time to develop. Okay, So, only this uh, fluid mechanical development of large scale structures um, immediately does not allow for mixing and um, uh, only after this develop and some straining has been uh, inflicted and some um, uh, large gradients of species has been formed, uh, then the mixing can start. So, as, as you said here that at the end of the mixing transition length, the turbulent structures in the shear layer evolve uh, as, as the shear layer develops the Reynolds number also increases. So, it undergoes uh, uh, there is a turbulence also develops and this turbulence structure since uh, the shear layer have evolved to a degree that allows mixing at a molecular level to begin. As you know turbulence helps in mixing through uh, similar to a energy cascade process uh, that is um, uh, first um, uh, this uh, um, this large eddies are formed and then uh, this uh, creates essentially uh, large strains the the the, the the different um, the fluid and this uh, as the fluid is strained uh, then this uh, the gradients become large and large ok. So, even if there is a large gradient um, uh, uh, so the way uh, uh, turbulence mixes is that if you have a large uh, uh, gradient uh, of a species of a, of a scalar. So, essentially turbulence uh, creates uh, large scale structures uh, which really does not uh, help in mixing and at, at as it is, but then these large scale stru structures develop into small and small scale structures to the cascading and as this cascading happens this um, small scale structures are very large strain rates. So, this uh, large uh, strain rates essentially creates uh, stretches the fluid and this as the fluid is stretched uh, it develops composition gradients um, across the two different um, species and then uh, at the small scales this composition gradients can essentially diffuse um, by uh, molecular diffusivity and then these two can mix. Okay. 
So mixing essentially is a small scale phenomena and uh, in, 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 uh, in turbulence and uh, because ultimately it is diffusivity or, or diffusion that has to control the mixing. But then uh, what turbulence can do is that because of this uh, because of this multi scale and the cascading um, uh, processes it can quickly form the small scale structures from the large scale structures. So where by which the mixing is essentially enhanced. Okay. And of course, uh, you can see that the turbulence has a diffusive, very strong diffusive nature also. That uh, if you have two particles in a in a in a in a, in a quiescent environment, uh, if you have a large uh, 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 cloud of particles in a quiescent environment, they essentially the, their uh, distance. Uh, the dispersion, uh, the pair dispersion distance, uh, that is the distance between any two particles, statistically changes like uh, uh, as a function, as like as a proportional to t, proportional to time. But if it is turbulence, then this this uh, uh, distance squared uh, changes proportional to t squared or t cube. So as a result, the turbulence essentially uh, is very diffusive in nature, and it um, that also helps in the mixing. Okay, so uh, but then, as I said, that we cannot only rely on uh, uh, on the shear layer mixing because uh, in compressible flows, uh, uh, shear layer has a, has a limitation uh, because at Mach number, this shear layer growth becomes limited. So one can often use the transverse flow mixing also, where they essentially inject. So if the, this is a flow coming, so they inject perpendicular to the flow and a jet uh, forms like this. Okay, so that is called a typical like a jet in a cross flow. But when you, uh, but if this flow is supersonic, and even if this jet is under expanded, that really leads to a very complex uh, fluid mechanical and shock structure, uh, fluid mechanical structures uh, developing all around it. Now, as you see in this model of a transverse under expanded jet in a supersonic stream, this uh, this first injected uh, stream forms a barrel um, shock, and that generates this bore shock uh, around it. Okay, mm, uh, um, essentially we are uh, we think of the Boshock as a two-dimensional structure, but here you see it's essentially a because the flow field is very strongly three-dimensional. It has a full three-dimensional um, structure, the Boshock that has formed, and it leads to formation of this uh, recirculation region in front of the jet, and this vortexes uh, spill around around this um, uh, the the, the uh, around the barrel shock. And this uh, bends in the uh, and uh, also this uh, uh, jet bends in the downstream direction because there is a very strong momentum of air that is uh, uh, that is coming, um, which immediately bends the, uh, the jet. And there is the additional recirculation zone forms in the both the recirculation zones are formed both upstream and the downstream locations um, uh, here and here. And the downstream injectant angle relative to the supersonic air stream decreases and the turbulent shear layer forms when the mixing continues. And this is facilitated by the stream was what is spilling off from the injectant plume. So it is a very complex structure that you can see that uh, this, there are recirculation zone forms here, recirculation zone formed here and there are vorticity structures uh, formed around this. So um, uh, it is a complex structure but then uh, this uh, leads to very nice um, uh, uh, mixing because of the um, strong interaction of this um, uh, jet into the incoming flow. And this jet penetration is uh, often given by uh, uh, the ratio of the dynamic pressures and um, uh, often this uh, this is the height of the mark disc uh, with respect to the wall and uh, this is the uh, diameter and this is the ratio of the dynamic pressure of the jet divided by the dynamic pressure of the air and it scales like uh, the z by d the height from the wall is divided by d scales like the ratio of the dynamic pressure of the jet to the air to the raised to the power of 0.5. And you see that this is how the jet penetration trajectories in this uh, z, which is the height from the wall, bottom wall, varies according to x. So this is how uh, typically, uh, and there are several correlations that one can find in literature uh, to develop this jet uh, trajectory. Okay, so it is of important to understand how this, when where this jet is going, because you need to tar, you need to ensure or you need to inject the jet in a such a manner that it goes into the region where you want combustion. So this uh, formulating this jet trajectories and characterizing this jet trajectories experimentally and analytically is of very high interest. So with that uh, uh, the gaseous mixing is uh, we, uh, we, we have covered and then in the next few uh, in the next classes we will cover the, mm, uh, the liquid jet injection and uh, uh, the uh, essential um, uh, features of the combustion process in a scramjet engine. So till then goodbye. Thank you.